Jesus is the answer for the world today. Morning and welcome to Christian Pentecostal Church's devotional moment. I'm Pastor Brenda Bird. Would you turn with me to Hebrews chapter 1? And the title of this message is Christ is the Answer. So while you're turning there, let's open in prayer. Father, we thank you this morning, O oh God, that Jesus is the answer to every question that life may bring. Father God, I pray this morning as we go into your word, O oh God, every listening ear, every attentive heart, O oh God, will be ministered to. Holy Spirit, have your way. We just thank you, O oh God, that in you we have peace, within you we have strength and we have hope. Lord, you tell us in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. We thank you for your word this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Hebrews talks to us, Hebrews chapter 1, basically talks to us about the superiority of Christ. All through uh, the Old Testament, from Genesis to Malachi, we see manifestations of our Redeemer, our Savior, our Lord, Christ. But Hebrews bring it all into alignment for us, showing us that every feast, every festival, every uh, sacrifice was a type of Christ. And so let's start off. We're going to read um, Hebrews chapter 1. We're going to read some verses out of this, and then we're going to discuss it for a few minutes. It says in Hebrews chapter 1, God, who at various times, in various ways, spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets. We said that Old Testament all the way up to Malachi. Has in these last days spoken to us, to you and I, by his son. So everything that we want to know about God, about the father, about his ways, has been revealed to us through his son. Jesus the Christ, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds. John 1 tells us that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and everything that was made was made by him and through him, and without him nothing that was made was made. Verse 14 tells us that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory the glory of the only begotten Son of God. It goes on to tell us that the Lord came through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man come to the Father unless he come through me. So Hebrews is explaining to us here that everything that God has done all the way from the Old Testament, showing to our fathers and the prophets, is culminated in Jesus. And so in these last days, verse 2 says that he is speaking to us through his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, to whom also he made the world, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power. When he has by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of majesty on high. So the Bible tells us that after Jesus paid for our sins, died, he rose again, and now he is sitting at the right hand of the Father. The Bible tells us that Jesus is coming back one day to judge this world. As I read this, I want you, brothers and sisters, and even those who may not know Christ, to search your heart. Open your heart to the Lord and allow him to come in and be your savior. Because according to the word of God, the first time Jesus came, he came, as these verses said, to purge our sin, that we would be cleansed. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So Jesus came for the first time to be savior, Lord, and redeemer. He said, I came to seek and save the lost. But here it tells us now he has paid that price. And he's sitting next to the father 
on the right hand of the Father on high. The Bible also tells us in Matthew that Jesus is coming back. Hallelujah. And this time he's not coming back as a suffering savior. He's not coming back to be beaten and whipped and to hung on the cross. He did that already. And he did that for you, my friend, and he did it for me. But the next time he's coming back, he's coming back as judge. He's coming back to judge the earth. He's not coming back as a, a soft, wimp baby. He's coming back as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords in all power. And my advice to you from the love of God is to please open your heart to Jesus. One day, you're going to stand before him. I'm going to stand before him. It's not going to be with our friends and our family. Or no, 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 no. It's going to be a one-on-one -on -one with you and God. And he's going to want to know what did you do What the provision of salvation he has provided for you. Why didn't you accept his love that he extended to you? Oh, glory to God. Verse 4 says, having become so much better than the angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For to which of the angels did he ever say, you are my son, today I have begotten you. When the gave, angel Gabriel appeared to Mary and told her that she was going to um, be impregnated and she was going to bear the son of God. And her words was, how can this happen? Because I've never known a man. I've never been intimate with a man. And so Gabriel, the angel, began to explain to her that the Holy Spirit was going to overshadow her and the seed of God was going to be planted in her womb. But then he gave her a name, hallelujah. And he said, his name shall be called Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. When you call on the name Jesus, it means Savior. Hallelujah. When you sing hallelujah and, and hosanna, hosanna, it means Lord come now. Hallelujah. He's waiting with outstretched arms for everyone that's listening to come into the fold that he has provided for us. He says, I will be to him a father and he shall be to me a son. But when he again brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all the angels of God worship him. Verse 8 says, but to the son, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. Hallelujah. We see Jesus say in Luke, in Luke chapter four, he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Verse 18. And he has anointed me to heal the brokenhearted. He has anointed me. Hallelujah. To bind the brokenhearted. Hallelujah. Come into the fold of the Lord and come and sit at his table where the food is spread and the, the blessings of the Lord. Hallelujah. Is going on in our lives. Verse nine, uh, Hebrews chapter two, verse nine says this. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor that he, by the grace of God, might taste death for everyone. He tasted death for you and he tasted death for me. Verse four and five says, God also bearing witness both with signs and wonders, with various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit, according to his own will. For he has not put the world to come, of which we speak in subject to angels, but one testified in a certain place, who is man that you might you are mindful of him, or the son of man that you care of him. You made him a little lower than the angels. You have crowned him with glory and honor and set him over the works of your hand. You have put all things subject under his feet. I want to tell you, Jesus is coming back. Hallelujah. I want to tell you that Jesus is superior. Hallelujah. To anything in the Old Testament, everything there was speaking of him. Christ is better than the angels for they worship him. Hallelujah. He is better than Moses for he created him. He is better than the Aaronic priesthood for his sacrifice was once and for all time. Hallelujah. They sacrificed the animal every year and put the blood on the mercy seat. But his blood was shed once and for all. Hallelujah. For eternity, the blood forever cleanseth. Hallelujah. He is better than the law, for he mediates 
a better covenant. I want to close with some verses out of Hebrews chapter 9. And it says, verse 24, For Christ has not entered the holy place made with hands, which are copies of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Not that he should offer himself often as the high priest enters the most holy place every year with the blood of another. He then would have had to suffer often since the foundation of the world. But now once at the end of the age, he has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. So Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. To those who eagerly wait for him, he will appear a second time, apart from sin, but unto salvation. I pray today you make Jesus your Lord, because Jesus is the only answer to every question this world may have. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May he lift up his countenance towards you and give you his peace. God bless you. God willing, see you next week.